Hello and welcome to a slightly different video this time round, where me and my little one are going around sunny Letchworth on a retro game hunting charity shop and CEX expedition. Um, the challenge today is to spend no more than £10 on some Wii games for her and maybe maybe one or two titles for myself. She's really enjoying the, the Wii balance board and the way that she can just move the controllers to get into games so she really wants some new games for the Wii. So the first shop, just loads of books, a few DVDs and oh what's that? Some ring binders, no not that, and no not that CD, no put that down, there. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory for the PC, a Ubisoft exclusive. And that was the extent of the uh, gaming in this charity shop. Um, I had been in it before and it was never very good. Even the toys were a bit rubbish. So we moved swiftly on across the road to the Willow Foundation shop, which I haven't been into for a while. A really good charity that I have supported in the past. So just wait for the car to go and we'll go across with my dodgy buggy cam camera footage. But they've changed it in here. They seem to have just filled up with books. Not many toys either. Not much to shout about in here at all. No games. The only thing that I was confused about was this thing. Can anybody tell me what this is? It had like a floppy pump arm and looked like you put water in the bottom of it, but I couldn't work out how you would use it. So if anybody knows what this is, please let me know. Then on to the next shop, which again used to be pretty good. Used to have one of these bookshelves filled with DVDs and games and CDs. But today they had about 20 CDs. Most of which were classical and not really my thing. And this is my daughter coming over to me now because the toys were pretty crap as well. So we didn't stay in here long. I had a quick look to see if there were any compilation CDs that I might like to listen to in my office. But no, it was pretty rubbish. So we moved on to the next one. And we thought the next one was going to be pants as well, but we did come across some DS titles. This one, Amazing Adventures, The Forgotten Ruins for £1.50. Um, gameplay footage should be on the screen now. Um, yeah, sort of a, a puzzle game. Not really my thing. Uh, the next one was Dual Quest Mysteries, Curse of the Emerald Tear, which looks like another sort of puzzle game. So I'm guessing these were all bought in by the same person, which uh, enjoyed these on the DS. And I do like the DS and the 3DS, but not these type of games. And another one, Mystery Case Millionaire. You be the detective, spot the clues, find the millionaire. Yep, not me. Uh, this one, Mahjong Quest Expeditions. Again, not really a big Mahjong fan. So I'll pass on that one as well. And then there was one more at the back here, which is the one you always see, a brain training game. Do you remember these? They were everywhere, weren't they, back in the day, really popular. And now they're everywhere in charity shops. So we were just about to leave, and then I noticed this little bin had mini figures written on it. And I thought, oh, I wonder what's in here. Could be something interesting. But it was just a load of tat. Really, really was. There wasn't any mini figures in there at all, so... Yeah, that was crap. Managed to talk my daughter out of buying that Rapunzel. And we swiftly moved on to the next one. Now this is a big furniture shop type place, which has a few DVDs and games, as you can see on the right hand side here. I was just about to go across when I nearly stepped over this person in their orange jacket. Just spotted them at the last moment. I don't know if I've missed them to be honest, but so I had to go all the way around the sofa and wait for this little lad to bugger off. Again, apologies about the dodgy camera work, uh, but mainly PC games in here, pretty disappointing. A couple of Wii games, but Wii Fit and uh, Tiger Woods PGA, which my hand's covering there, and a few PlayStation titles, but uh, PlayStation 2, sorry, but nothing really that was any worth anything. And then into this next one, which is another really big one. Shaky cam on the buggy. The only thing they had in here that was any good was this uh, rather chunky Darth Vader. It looked pretty cool. And I quite like this shelving unit. It's always got like loads of 
bric-a-brac and crap on it, but uh, nothing today. So then on to this next one. Oh, man running very fast. And a man going very slowly. So this is the uh, the posh charity shop in, in Letchworth. Uh, because it has uh, automatic sliding doors, which is quite something for a charity shop. So I saw the IKEA Billy bookcases at the back and um, made a beeline for them. My daughter then pulled me across to these books because she was very excited. Hand me a doll because she wanted to have a good look at stuff. And I was just about to keep looking at those when I noticed another little cabinet here which had loads of PlayStation 2 games. Which I don't really collect for, but I thought I'd have a look. So a few here, Medal of Honor, Brothers in Arms, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Lockdown, Medal of Honor, ATV Offload. A few different ones. The Italian Job, LA Heist. Now that looks quite interesting. Uh, pulled that out, had a little look. Two pound all of these. Some Xbox titles, mainly sports ones that I'm not interested in and then looked up here my camera work there we go and some more Medal of Honor and then right at the end Virtual Tennis 3 for the PlayStation 3 now I've got Virtual Tennis 1 and 2 for the Dreamcast but I've never played Virtual Tennis 3 so that might be one to, to grab that might be one to take home now excuse my uh, shoddy camera work, but this guy kept reversing into me and uh, pretty much put his ass in my face before he apologised and moved back a little bit. I pick up PGA Tour here because I thought I was picking up uh, Virtual Tennis 3 because um, I was struggling to hold the camera and concentrate at the same time. And some racing games and a couple of PC games. And then I went back to the Billy Bookcase section where all the DVDs were. And there was a few more games here. A PSP game, weirdly. Um, some PS3 Fifas, your usual fare. Some Blu-rays. Uh, Teenage Ninja Turtles DVD. Might be quite cool. But other than that, not much here. So we moved on to the next one. But quite a nice, quite a nice charity shop quite like this one. So CEX next. Apologies with the reflection but just wanted to look in the window what was there. So we had a Battle Toads, Battle Maniacs, is it Battle Maniacs or ba Battle? Battle? Yeah, but I think it's Battle Maniacs. Um, I used to have this game uh, but I don't know what happened to it. I never got, I never got any money for it let alone 70 quid for it. I think I might have even gave, given it away. Um, Dreamcast memory there. Super Mario 2. And a rather lovely Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn for £42. Um, if anybody's collecting for that. Some Mega Drive games. Sonic and Sonic 2, I think that is. And Cannon Fodder. And then moving along here, Dreamcast, PlayStation games, one Dreamcast game. And a Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Anthology for £75 on the PlayStation. I'm guessing that's all the Final Fantasy games up to that point. A mini SNES for £100, a lot of money. And two rather nice looking Konami games, Prince of Persia and Axelay. I think that's how you say it, Axelay. £80 they wanted for that, £55 for Prince of Persia, but they looked fairly decent. Some random GameCube titles and some loose Nintendo 64 and NES carts. A Super R-Type, now I don't know what makes that Super, is it just because it's on the Super Nintendo? Or because it's different from normal R-Type? Anyway, the box was fairly battered on that one, lots of creases and scuffs. And then this box was quite nice, Blue Shadow on the NES for £40. This was in really good condition, it looked pretty much brand new to be honest. That's quite nice. A blue Neo Geo pocket colour. Wouldn't mind one of them, 145 quid they want for that now. And next to that was 
uh, final fantasy game for the PSP, £28. GameCube controller, now £28 for them. And a SNES mouse, £15 for that. It looked like it had a mark on it. But I've not come across one of them in the wild before. Uh, and then some, just some loose carts you can see knocking about. Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Pinball, unboxed. And some other loose carts, Lemmings, some DS games, £40 there for a Pokemon Red. A rather nice Wii Wii U Mario Wii controller, £35. Again, seems quite expensive. And then we moved on to the Wii games. Uh, and there wasn't a massive amount here, actually, that uh, me or the little one were interested in. Carnival, we have that one. Some Lego ones. Lynx Crossbow Training, which is quite an interesting game. Dance 4, Heat Seeker, which I've never heard of before. £1.50. Quantum of Solace, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Some Toy Story games, which we do look at, but not on video. Come back to that at the end. Mario Strikers Charge Football. And this one, more Game Party. So we have Game Party, but not more Game Party. And the little one likes uh, Game Party. She can do a, a, a few of those. So I thought might might check this one out. So that, that might be one to hold on to. Some Sonic games. Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, another Lego Star Wars game. Rock Band. Super Smash Brothers. And Mad Dog McCree here. Which I've not seen on the Wii before. Kind of interesting. Um, and Pokey Park for £28. No thank you. Don't want that. Um, so I'll try to put that back. Uh, yeah, this this I didn't know was available for the Wii. Um, it's always one of those games where when I, if I saw it in the arcade, I'd be like, wow, look at this, real action. And then it was actually pretty shit. But I wonder whether it might be quite interesting on the Wii. But it was £8, which would have put us out of our, put us out of budget. As would have Donkey Kong Country Returns for £8. But that's a lot of game for £8. I think I had that on the, the 3DS, but I don't have it anymore. And then some Wii U titles. I think this is general Wii U fare. Nothing here. Any big hitters. I would imagine they'd have them in the window anyway. Wii Fit U. I didn't know existed. I'm guessing that uses the same balance board as the Wii. The original Wii. Uh, but I never knew that existed as a thing. Uh, Sonic games. I think I looked at all these. Space Chimps. Quick look over here at the DS games. But nothing really. Donkey Kong, oh look, Donkey Kong Country Returns there, £12 on the 3DS. I'm pretty sure I had that, but I lost a bunch of my games. I'm not sure what I did with them. And then some GameCube games that are out. So there's uh, Rogue, Leader, Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2, which is a really good game. Worth every penny of that £8. If you're into Star Wars games, that's a definite must if you've got a, a GameCube or a Wii. Um, and then this one on the end, The Great Edgar Hunt, which I've never heard of. Looked quite interesting. Uh, Animal Maniacs, if that's how you say it, game. A little sort of cartoon game. And that was about it on the Wii. Taz Wanted for £8. On the Wii, on the GameCube. And then for the PlayStation 3, it was just this one really that stood out. The Metal Gear HD Collection triple set for £32, which seemed like quite a lot of money to me. But it was the real sort of only heavy hitter they had out on the shelves. And they had two of them. Uh, but um, yeah, it looks like they've upscaled the Metal Gear Solid collection to HD for the PlayStation 3. Then into the shop across the road from CEX here in Letchworth. And there's this nice little vintage shop. And my daughter likes to press the buttons on this little underground train station. And you can see the trains moving. It's got little underground tube station platforms uh, that run across the length of the the whole thing. You can see the trains moving here. I'm trying to video it, but I'm not doing a very good job. I'm trying to stop my little one running off at the same time, but you see there's a, there's a train going. Really cool. And all the buttons work and it has announcements and things. It makes train noises. It's really smart. And some old Hornby railway sets for sale above it. And this chopper command with flashing strobing light, a real flying police helicopter, real chopper sounds. 
brand new in box pretty much apparently 45 pound i wanted for that it looks pretty good and then they've got these sort of carousels and sort of miniature fairground toys for display and um, some history about the underground and this japanese tin plated 1960s robot fully working apparently 120 pound for that and 40 pound for the uh, little tin plated helicopter next to it also 1960s but really really nice that that tin robot's really really good some corgi classics fred dibner's steam engine little box in pretty good condition but yeah really nice shop this always pop in here after cx to see what they've got because they've always got something new so they obviously uh do sell some of their stock but yeah now after something to eat so a quick bite to eat before going home some chips for the little one and some fried chickpea hummus and some pita bread for me so a really good day out didn't find masses of, of games but still fun for all so what did we get well i did pick up virtual tennis 3 for two pound uh paid a little bit over what you'd pay for it in cx um i think it's one pound or one pound 15 cx but it was two pound in this charity shop but i thought i'd give it a go so i've got the first two so i thought i'd give the, the third one a try on the playstation 3 and it's all for charity mate so that's pretty good next we have more game party for three pounds that takes us up to five pound in total now and this one my daughter wanted because she's pretty good at these type of games i'm not sure if these are going to be any harder or any easier than, than the other one not a brilliant game but a little bit of fun we can sort of sit down on the sofa and play together so we bought that for three pound and then on to the next one which was Toy Story 3. Now there was two Toy Story games, but we couldn't afford both of them with our £10 limit. And the other one, CEX couldn't find because we were going to go for that one because this one looked a little bit too hard for my little one. But it, it does um, use the nunchuck and the controller. So I'll do the nunchuck and she'll do the controller to press the buttons, uh, which is how we tend to work on these slightly harder games. But she loves Toy Story, so she'll enjoy playing that, I'm sure. Um, and uh, yeah looks pretty good so that was four pound so that just left us with one pound left and we went for this celebrity sports showdown pretty much because it looks um, very much like the we play games lots of sport related four player games where you you wiggle the controller to go faster and tilt it to go left and right so nice and easy for her and it's got loads of um, celebrities in it now i was convinced this was some sort of tv show in america that we missed somehow but no it doesn't appear to be um, it's just a random bunch of celebrities which I guess they were able to sign so Keith Urban uh, Avril Lavigne Nelly Furtado um, and some other people who I had no idea who they were some basketball players I think yeah so quite an interesting title um, an EA title as well quite it's quite well polished so um, it's gonna be fun to give that a go Anyway, that was our that was our pickups. We managed to get in for ten pounds and even got something for myself. So, all in all, pretty happy with that. Not a great day, charity game hunting, and CEX didn't have much either. But uh, we had lots of fun. And anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.